Blessing in seed form. The Bible says not only so, but we rejoice in our suffering. One of the first things, how many of you want to go to the next level in here? Shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to go, I want to go. Well, God says, Robert, tell my people that if they want to go to the next level, they have to be prepared to learn how to rejoice in their suffering. Hallelujah. Is your mic phone working? We have got to learn how to rejoice in our suffering. Not when the deliverance comes, but while you are going through your trial, while you are going through your tribulation, God says rejoice in your suffering. Amen. Amen. That's the first step. The nation of Israel, when they went through the wilderness, their problem was not lack of water or lack of food or the sun or the... The problem was their complaining about the situation they were in. My prayer for you, Nigerian brothers and sisters, is that from this night on, you will not complain in the name of Jesus. Yeah. You will not complain about your roads. You will not complain about your electricity. You will not complain about your government. Uh-oh. Nowhere in the scripture are we instructed to complain. In fact, the Bible tells us in Philippians to do everything without complaining and arguing. My prayer for you is that from tonight on you will not complain and you will not argue. In Jesus' name. What do we got to do in our suffering, children of God? Rejoice. Glory in tribulation. Not because we are sadistic or because we enjoy suffering, but what I'm trying to get you to understand, children of God, is that your suffering has a divine purpose in your life. Divine purpose in your life. Some of you in here tonight, including myself, well, if it wasn't because you were going through hell and high water at home. Oh my God. God is using suffering. God said, look, Robert, tell my people, I don't refine gold in water. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. God says, I don't refine gold in water, but I refine gold in fire. You are being refined in Jesus' name. So you are being refined in Jesus' name. Your suffering is no more than a refining process of God. Mm -hmm. Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, Bishop Cartagen, I know you hear what the Holy Ghost is saying tonight. You've been through some things. Mm. You're suffering. Mm. God says, I'm trying to take you to the next level. Mm. Amen. God says, I've got character building on my mind. We talked yesterday about character, right? Yes, what we say the first thing in, in, in our character was? Yes, Thoughts. Action. Put your hands together for Jesus. Hallelujah. Well done, children. God says, I'm more concerned about the development of your character than I am your temporary comfort and ease. God says, I want you to be like me. God says, I'm conforming you into the likeness of my only begotten son, Jesus Christ. God says, I know it doesn't feel good all the time. I know it doesn't look good all the time. God says, I know you don't always like what I'm allowing you to pass through, and sometimes you don't like what I'm taking you through, but God says all things work together for good. Oh, come on, somebody. If you love the Lord, and you've been called according, according to his purpose, I don't care how bad it feels, it's so we rejoice. In our suffering, because we know that suffering produces perseverance. Rejoice in your suffering. It's producing perseverance. The adversary has sold some of us a lie. We think that suffering is the enemy. Children of God, I'm trying to let you know something. You're going to have to hear this with spiritual ears or you're going to think I'm a false prophet. Suffering is your friend. <laughs> suffering is your friend. God says that do not be surprised at the fiery trial that is about to try you as though some strange thing were happening. But rejoice that you are participating in the sufferings of Christ that, when his, that you may be overjoyed when his glory is revealed. Because you know that the trial of your faith is working patience or perseverance. God says you may not know it, but I'm developing you through your suffering. I'm shaping you. I'm molding you. 
a lump of clay cannot complain to the potter about what the potter is doing. For it is the potter's decision to make the lump of clay, not the lump of clay's decision to make the potter. Come on, children of God. Somebody, that's just, that's just, that's just, that's just, that's yes, I don't. It's God's decision to make us like He wants us, not our decision to make us like we want us. Mm. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> God is the potter. We are the clay. Some of us think God is the clay and we are the potter. God says you got it backwards. You got it all backwards. God says, I'm the one that's molding you. I'm the one that's shaping you. I'm the one that's making you. And God says, I will use suffering. The Bible says in Hebrews 12 and 7, endure hardship mm. as discipline. Mm. God is treating you as sons. And what son is not disciplined by his father? Come on, I, I, got, a, I got a son. I got grandchildren. What with my son? I got an oldest son who's handling the preaching and the teaching at my church while I'm down here running around preaching and teaching. 18 years old, preaching and teaching the word of God. He's been up under the word of God for the last 10 years every day. If he can't preach and teach the word, something's wrong with him. He been, I told you all, we don't worship on Monday, Sunday, and Wednesday and all. We worship every day. Three times a day, 9 a.m. to 11, then we got a radio broadcast from 5.30 to 5.45, then we got evening worship from 6 o'clock to about 7.30, 7.45, every day. Now some of y'all looking at me like, Apostle, where you get that from? Acts 2 and 46. When the Holy Spirit came on the belief on the day of Pentecost, daily they continued to meet together in the temple courts, not Sundays. I encourage pastors, bishops, overseers, men and women of God that, are, that have been given the care over God's people, have something going at your church every day. Yeah. Everybody might not come, but remember, God said we're two or, huh? God didn't say we need two or three thousand. Earlier tonight, one of the things I shared with Bishop Carter, and I said, look, we need to be there. We said 530, we need to be there. I said, we don't wait for the people to come. When we tell people the time, we be there and we get started right then if it ain't but one person in the house. You don't punish the people that are there on time. By making them wait till 6 o'clock, then what's the, what's the purpose of them coming on time? In the kingdom of God, there is no Africa time. God don't hear no Africa time. We're to be men and women of integrity. We're to be faithful men and women. When we say 5.30, we need to be dry. We need to get things going at 5.30. Right. If it ain't even one soul in the house. You don't get more God at a place because more people come. God said, well, I, I didn't tell you that. God says, I'm either there or I'm not there. And I told you that when two or three are gathered together in my name, I am there. Uh -huh. I ought to give God the praise. Oh. Fired up, man of God. Ain't but one person there. Service started at 11 o'clock. Fired up. Don't need but two or three. I don't need two or three hundred thousand people. I'm not here to worship the crowd. I'm here to worship God. And the truth be known, I can do that right by myself. Huh? If we got three people in the house, we got more than enough. God says. Because God said, all I said you needed was two or oh, three. <laughs> Bless the name of Jesus. Fire up. Ain't but one person in the house, apostle. Fire up. Is God in the house? Yes. Fire up. Let's go. Oh, wait, wait, no, we don't get more God because more people come. We just get more people. God was already there. God sitting back doing like this. What they waiting on? I'm here. I'm starting to say, look, I'm supposed to be the star of the show, right? Yes, Lord. Well, God says, I'm here. Two or three of y'all are gathered together in my name. I'm here. What y'all waiting for? Everybody else just be lit. Everybody else just come in like Thomas, who was not with the disciples when Jesus first came. In your suffering, children. The next time you look up and see yourself as a child of God, going through extreme suffering, your praise and your worship ought to be at its highest point. You say, Apostle, why do you say that? Because what that is is an indication that God is getting ready to take you to the next level. That's how God promotes you through